Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail uh, the steps behind uh, undertaking an ANOVA calculation and more importantly when you have to do an ANOVA calculation by hand. Okay. Uh, the scenario I'm going to deal with is a, is a, is a fictitious scenario. Uh, this particular scenario is based on a particular experiment, let's say, okay, and the experiment was I asked people or I asked students uh, how much did they spend over the previous weekend. Okay. But not only did I ask uh, students how much did they spend over the previous weekend, I also recorded their age. Okay. So what we can see here in the first column is the responses from the age group 20 to 30 years of age. The first person said they spent 50 euros, the next person 60, 70, 65 and 80 euros. Uh, there was five responses or five students that were aged between 20 and 30. There was five students aged between 30 and 40 and here are their relevant responses. There was five, four students aged between 40 and 50 and here's their respective responses listed in this particular group. Okay, so the question we have now from an ANOVA perspective is, is there evidence based on this sample data, is there evidence to suggest, uh, is there evidence to suggest that any one of these groups was, was drawn from a, from a population that had a different mean to any one of the other groups? Okay, and to undertake this we have to do an ANOVA calculation. Okay. Now, the formulas for an ANOVA calculation look a little bit complicated looking. Okay. Uh, I will go to two to five steps in a moment, but first of all we need to build uh, what's known as our F statistic. Our F statistic, our F statistic is defined to be the mean sum of squares between measure uh, divided by the mean sum of squares within measure, uh, where uh, we have the mean sum of squares within measure uh, is equal to the sum of for each group that we have okay for each group it's the distance that the observations are away from their group mean squared divided by n minus k where n is the total number of observations that we have 5 10 14 and k is the number of groups 1 2 3 so in this scenario here n n is going to be equal to 14 and k is going to be equal to 3. That's the total number number of observations of observations. Okay. And k is our total number number of groups. Okay. Uh, to calculate the within measure, I will define the between measure in a few moments. Yeah. To calculate the within measure. What we need to do for each group is we need to calculate the group average, okay? X bar subscript small g. Okay. To calculate the group averages, we simply add up all the observations in each group and divide by how many observations that we have. Now in this particular case here, when I add up all of these observations here, and when I divide by five, I get a group average of sixty-five. Okay? When I add up all the observations in group in group B and divide by 5, uh, I get an average of 80.6, which I'm going to round to 81. And when I add up all the observations in group C and when I divide by 4, I get an average of 171.25, which I'm going to round to 171. Okay, so what we now have is we have all of the X bar G values okay, for each of our group, each of our groups. So now what we do is we construct for each of our groups, we measure how far each observation is away from the, their, the, their respective group mean, and we square that. So for group A, let's say, okay, I'm going to do this, it's going to be a large calculation, okay. So for group A, okay, I'm going to calculate what X bar, sorry, what X minus X bar of G is for group A, okay. This is for group A. And then I'm going to square that value to give me x minus x bar subscript of g squared for group A. Okay? Now in this particular calculation what I'm really saying is for each observation we're going to take away the respective mean. So we have 50, 50 minus 65 gives us minus 15, 60 minus 65 gives us minus 5, 70 minus 65 gives us 5, 65 minus 65 gives us 0, and 80 minus 65 gives us a value of 15. Okay, so for group A we know how far each observation is away from its own respective mean. What we need to do is we need to square that to get the square distances that observations are away from the mean. 
So don't forget, a square will result in all positive values down this column. So 15 squared, or minus 15 squared, is 15 times 15 is 225. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25. 0 times 0 is 0. And 15 times 15 is 225. Okay. Now, if we calculate the sum of these square distances, we're calculating the sum of squares for group A. And the sum of these values here is 225 and 225 is 450, uh, plus 25 and 25, which is 50, gives us a total of 500. So for group A, this is the sum of squares, uh, or a measure of it's not the average variance, it's a measure of the squared, the, the squared distance that observations are away from the group mean. Now we do the, the same calculation, okay, we do the same calculation for our next group, okay. So for our next group we're going to calculate uh, how far the observations are away from the group mean, okay. Uh, and this is for group B, okay, and then we're going to square them values, okay. We're going to square them values to give us our squared distances, okay. So our, our mean value is 81. The first calculation is asking us how far is 70 away from 81, or 70 minus 81 gives us minus 11. 75 minus 81 gives us minus 6. 62 minus 81 gives us a value of minus 19. 92 minus 81 gives us a value of 11. And 104 minus 81 is going to give us a value of 23. Okay. So we know now how far each observation in group B is away from its respective mean value. So now we calculate the squared distances. So we have, don't forget, all positive values down here. Negatives times negatives are going to be positives. Positives times positives will also be positives. Uh, so what we have is minus 11 squared, uh, or minus 11 times minus 11 is 121. 6 times 6 is 36. 19 times 19 is 361, 11 times 11 is 121, and 23 times 23 is 520, 29. And like with group A, we'll sum up these square distances to give us a value of, we have 1,168, okay? is a total sum of squares in that particular case. We continue, we do the same calculation for group C, calculating how far each observation is away from the respective mean. Okay, so it's x minus x bar of g, and then what we do is we square that value to calculate x minus x bar of g squared. Okay, so the first one is 150 minus 171 gives us minus 21. 250 minus 171 is equal to 79. 175 minus 171 is equal to 4 and finally 110 minus 171 is going to give us minus 61. Okay, uh, so now what we do is we're going to square these values. Uh, 21 squared gives us 441. Okay, 79 squared is going to give us a value of well, let's say we have 79 to be squared is going to give us a value of 6,241. 4 squared is 16. Uh, 61 squared is going to give us a value of 3,721. And once again, like in the other cases, we're going to sum up the sum of uh, sum up the square distances. So we have um, 441 plus 6241 plus 16 plus 3721 gives us a total of 10,419. Okay, so what we need to calculate the mean sum of squares within is we need the sum of these square distances for all of our groups. Okay, so actually the mean sum of squares within value, the mean sum of squares within, is going to be equal to, well, this is the sum of squares for the group A, this is the sum of squares for group A, this is the sum of squares for group B, and the sum of squares for group C. So if we sum them together, it gives us the total sum of squares. So it's going to be 500 plus 1168 plus 10419 divided by n, which is 14, minus 3 for the number of groups that we have. Okay, so in this particular case we have 10419 plus 1168 plus 500 gives us a value of 12087 and that needs to be divided by 11 
So that gives us a value that's approximately equal to, in our case here, so we're going to divide that by 11, which is approximately equal to uh, 101099. So the average sum of squares is approximately 1099. Okay, that's the hard part of the calculation done. Okay, now the next piece that we need to calculate is the mean sum of squares between measure. Now the mean sum of squares between measure is defined to be equal to the distance that each group mean is away from a global mean. Okay, uh, it's square distance, uh, and we have to do that for all of our groups. Okay, we have to take into consideration the group sizes. And we have to calculate the average of that, which is how many groups we have minus one. Okay, so I suppose we know each individual group mean. We have to calculate a global mean, which is where we pool all of our values together, okay, to and we calculate the average of all of our values, yeah, to give us our global.